In this video, we're going to go over how to find the maximum number in an array in C. And we're going to use integers for our example. We'll use int type, but it, this really could be floats or doubles, and it'll work more or less the same way. So we'll start off by making an array, and we'll make it called my array, and we'll throw a bunch of random numbers in there. So, you know, well, there we go. One, two, four. So how many have we got in there? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine numbers in there, and 10 is the maximum number. The way our algorithm is going to work to solve this problem is we're going to assume that this is initially the maximum number. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of this current maximum number. And then we're going to loop over. We're going to examine every element in the array one at a time. And if the element that we're currently looking at is greater than the current maximum number, we're going to say, well, that is the new maximum number then. And if we just keep doing that and we iterate over the entire array here, we'll have identified by the end of it, the maximum number in the entire array. So we'll say here int max is equal to, well, it's just, we'll assume it's the first thing in the array. Then we're going to say for int i is equal to zero. i is less than nine because we have nine things in our array, i plus plus. And what we're doing here is we're going to make a loop that is going to go from this element until the end of the array. And we're going to check each element. And we're going to say that if it's ever greater than the max, so if my array at i is ever greater than the current max value, then we have identified a new current max. So we're going to say that the max is actually this one. The max is this new value. And then what we can do is if we, if we go over the entire loop like that, We'll have, if we, sorry, if we go over the entire array like that, not the loop like that, uh, if we go over the entire array th with this loop here, then we're going to have identified the maximum because whatever number, you know, is, is greater than all the other numbers is the maximum. So we'll print it out here just so we can see that it's working right. And then we'll say demo, demo.c. So I'm just compiling it and then I'm going to run it. And we get max 10. And if ever you write code like this and it's confusing, you can always just throw in printfs to figure things out, just to figure out like what's going on where. So if we say print it out here, we said like, let's print out my array percent D is equal to percent D. And we print out, let's say I and my array at I. Then that would tell us here which element, oh, I should put a new line in there just so that way it formats a bit nicer. Without the new line, it kind of is all on one line there. Um, but but here you can see that like we're looking at this element, then this element, then this element, and you can tell that like we're looping through the array one element at a time, just like this loop suggests, right? And we, we could identify here, if we did a printf, we could identify when we're actually switching out the, the max value for a new max value. So we could say here, let's printf, and we'll do a printf. We'll say printf, and we'll say new max found percent D and we'll print out the new max value. And I'm actually just going to throw it under here just so it is the new max value after we've switched it. And I'll put a new line in too, just so it formats nice. So we'll recompile it here, run it again. And you can see that, you know, we start off with eight here as our maximum value, right? So when we encounter seven, five, three, we don't really do anything, but when we encounter nine, at that point, nine is greater than eight, right? It's greater than the first one there. So that's why we output here, new max found. And then when we encounter 10, same thing, new max found because 10 is greater than nine. And then one, two, four are not gonna do anything interesting because they're, they're not greater than 10. And so whenever you're confused about how code is working, just throw in ample printfs that print out the state of, you know, whatever array element you're looking at, like what its value is and what array element you're looking at you know, output inside if statements, you know, what change is happening, perhaps just that way you can figure out what's going on in your code. So one thing we could do with this if statement here, or sorry, with this with this loop here, I should say, is right now I've got it set to check from I zero all the way up to nine, and it's going to stop when it reaches nine, because there, there's it goes up to index eight, right from zero, one, two all the way up to eight for the indexes. So it's going to stop once it hits nine. One thing I could do is I don't really need to check that first element, right? Cause I'm just basically, I already set my max to my array zero. So here, when I did the check and I'm checking 
my array zero is eight, we know that my array zero is not going to be greater than max because the max is set to my array zero. So I can basically skip over that first element when I do my check and it's not going to impact the correctness of my program. I can still run this. I'm still going to get the same max 10 value. Um, and it's, it's still going to work fine. So I can do that as like a tiny little optimization there. And then another thing I might want to do is I might want to throw this into a function. So that way I can call, you know, a find max function wherever I need to find the, uh, maximum value of an maximum value inside an array. So if I want to do that, I could, you know, make a function. So I'll say int find max. I'll make my function uh, declaration up here and I'll say int array int length. I'll pass in the array and the length. And then down here, I'll make my function. So I'll provide my function definition down here and I'll basically just copy and paste this because, or copy and paste a lot of this because it's the same logic essentially just inside a function now. Um, and what I'm going to do in this function is I called it array instead of my array. So I'm going to change this to array. I'm going to change this to array and length is now provided as a parameter. Just that way I can run this function with arrays of different length. So it's not going to matter what the length is. I'm just going to keep checking all the elements and I'll just provide a length as an argument to the function. And what I'll do now is I'll return max. So I'm going to return the max value from the function. So I've got one array here. I can make another array here and we can call the function twice just to see what will happen. We'll say my array two, maybe I'll give this one a different length here. I'll say like five, nine, three, one, zero, eight. So we've only got how many, what, six in here? That's fine. Um, and what I'll say is I'll say, let's print out max one and we'll print out max two. And then I'm going to have a max one and max two variable. And I'll set those equal to the result of calling find max. So I'll say max one is equal to find max called with my array one and it's length nine. And we'll say int max two is equal to find max my array two and we'll call it with value six. And then when I run this code here, we'll, we'll be able to find the maximum value of each of these. I'm just going to clear, recompile this, run it. Find max of one is 10, find max of two is nine. And yeah, that, that makes sense. If I were to change this to like six, then eight should be the max value. We can just test it with different numbers just to see if it'll still work. So yeah, now eight's the max. If I made this, let's make this the max. Test that the first number is working correctly. Yep, now we get nine is the max. And, and so we're good. And so this would just be, you know, putting it into a, a function. So that way we can then call it wherever we like and call it in all different places in our, in our code. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.